The next topic we have is moral and ethical issues. So let's define both those words first. So morals, um, a moral person wants to do the right thing. So morals is more around wanting to do the right thing or the wrong thing. So you know what the right and wrong thing are. Whereas ethics is simply a set of rules which people follow. So again, morals, right or wrong, ethics, the set of rules which people follow. Now, because these are moral and ethical issues, these are all going to be, let's say, negative things that are as a result of us using computer systems. Again, this is unit one, information uh, technology systems, I believe. So the first one we have is environment. Now, when we think about this, right, every single smartphone, smart TV, laptop, tablet, any smart device that we have, these are made from some form of natural resources or some form of minerals which are mined or, or some trees have to be cut down to make the plastic, so on and so forth, right? This is going to impact the, um, the environment quite badly because we have to deplete resources to make these resources. So make the plastics and the, the chips we have in our phones, but we never give back. There's no way for us to put back what we've taken. So we're always depleting resources. Another massive thing is because we have so many factories and so many cars, so much tech, we're actually releasing a lot of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere which, as some of you might know, is eating away at the ozone layer. And that's a layer around the Earth which protects us from the ultraviolet rays and the, and, and the radiation that comes from outer space. So that's how, just a couple of reasons how the environment is affected. Next, we have unequal access. And as I've said many, many times before, the words or terms we use in most cases describe what that thing is about. Unequal access, not everyone has access to the same things or the same resources. Think about it like this. We've been in lockdown where we were in lockdown for roughly two years because of COVID. Many people in the UK had no issues with getting stuff done because here in the UK, every most people have a smartphone, a laptop or a tablet. They have some smart device at home which they can either use to work, play um, or do schoolwork as well. And here as well, by simply having broadband at home, Every single person, every single broadband package I've ever seen gives you unlimited data. So you can use as much data as you want. Typically, every month, I use about, let's say, four to 500 gigabytes of data on my broadband. However, this is not the case for many people around the world. I'm from the Caribbean. Just developing countries in general tend to not have the same amount of resources. People don't tend to have the same access to resources. And as a result of that, those countries, those people they're going to be at a disadvantage. Here in the UK, I've been able to work at home during lockdown for an entire year, year and a half, no issues whatsoever. However, people in poorer countries who don't have access to the same resources I have access to, they have had to put themselves in danger. Um, another one might be, even though you might be at a sixth form college here in the UK, other countries would have, which have sixth form colleges as well, their students might not be as advanced in some topics, especially if we've been locked down at home, because again, unequal access to technology means that here in the UK, everyone has us an iPhone, a nice Android phone. We can watch videos, we can join classes, we can do everything. In other countries, people that do not have that, people that did not have that infrastructure set up before COVID hit, people that could not afford the internet or a nice smartphone or a, a tablet or a laptop, they were not able to take part in their classes. They were not able to do stuff that they needed to do. So as a result of that, unequal access is going to mean unequal, well, a massive divide. We've been able to continue our lives more or less the same, whereas other people around the world, they have not been because they haven't had unequal access. They have not had access to the things that we've had access to. Next, we have online behavior. Most of the world had to go online over COVID again. Not a big issue for some people. However, this automatically meant that a lot of inexperienced people, a lot of um, people with mental issues, for example, they had to put themselves in a situation where they were not 100% comfortable or capable of being in properly, right? So on my screen here, I'm just going to mention these three. It says hacking. We already know what that means. It's illegally accessing someone's account to collect personal information or uh, impersonate them. So just getting their details to do something bad, to do something negative. So if that happens to someone, that could be really detrimental to that person's obviously financial well-being and physical well-being as well, because when some people get stressed out, it starts to affect them in a physical way. Next, we have trolling. 
intentionally provoking or upsetting people online. Now, this happens a lot in online gaming. I play games online quite a bit. Well, I used to. And trolling is something that was a huge, it still is a huge problem. Not everyone is going to have the fortitude I have to simply say, oh, these people are just silly and move on from it. Some people, it's really going to affect them. We have doxing as well. Not one that's well known, but this is posting someone's personal information online without their consent. This could be very, very serious. Imagine uh, someone posts your name, phone number, address, the school you go to, every single thing about you online. And some people will actually use that information to do bad things. They might start sending letters to your house, sending silly pranks or death threats or whatever the case is. So online behavior is a massive one as well. Studies have shown over the years that people who spend a lot of time online, so teenagers, youngsters who spend a lot of time online, they tend to have um, more of a, let's say, feeble mental state because they're glued to a screen, they're looking at images, for example, of, of what they think they should look like, how they think they should behave, so on and so forth. I'm not going to dive too much into that now, but online behavior is a massive one. And um, people being online also gives them that power that they don't have in person. Because a, a lot of people wouldn't say something negative to someone's face, but because they're online, they're hidden behind a keyboard, maybe on the other side of the world, and they know that there is going to be potentially no consequence of them being mean or doing something negative to someone, they'll simply do it. Next, we have globalization, and that simply means getting really big, looking everywhere. Everything is accessible to everyone. Now, this, in my opinion, is typically a good thing, but because, the ways, but because of the ways of companies, a company's main purpose is to make a profit, make money. So things are never going to be equal. For example, here in the UK, the minimum wage is somewhere between 8 and £10. Pounds. However, a company would more or less outsource to a different country. For a fact, I know that um, Amazon outsources work, so the customer service work, to Jamaicans because um, it's so much cheaper. Rather than paying someone here in the UK 8 to 10 pounds per hour, they could pay someone, let's say, I know Jamaica so I can speak about that, they, they can pay, let's say, 3 to 4 pounds per hour for the same job. And because it's an English-speaking country as well, then more or less people will understand what's being said and they can get the job done in, in, in just the same way. And that's actually a competitive, a good salary in some countries. So because of that, globalization is actually taking work away from, let's say, people here in the UK. Again, not a negative thing when you look at it surface level, but when you dig deeper, it is. The name of that term is called job outsourcing. Now, another one we have here is disease, disease is being spread. So... Here in the UK, again, in, in most countries, people typically tend to have vaccines against certain Ill, illnesses. However, there are some remote countries around the world, um, well, everywhere, to be honest, where people there don't have vaccines. They don't have diseases that we have here because they've isolated themselves. They, they, they either live in a jungle, a rainforest, a desert, where, wherever they choose to live. So as a result of that, they don't have the same illnesses that people that congregate in a massive city like London with millions of people have. So when someone from here, because of globalization, we can travel almost anywhere within a day or so. Because of globalization, it makes it very difficult for those people because when a foreigner, someone from here or anywhere else with vaccines or with illnesses goes there, they can actually spread diseases that those people have never encountered before. And as, as a result of that, because they have not had vaccines and they have not had what they needed to have to protect themselves against it, the disease spreads. And in some cases, they have actually wiped out entire tribes from something like that. Next, we have freedom of speech. So technology actually does remove freedom of speech a lot. And in some cases, it's good. In other cases, not so great. A good case may be something along the lines of someone being um, bullied online or someone being racist or sexist to other people online. I think those things should be banned. But again, who decides where it stops? Who decides what is okay and not okay to say? In some countries, some communist countries, let's I'm not going to call any names here, um, people actually don't have access to the entire internet. People don't have permission to say anything about anything about their ruling person in a negative light, or they will be found and they will be arrested and they will be dealt with very harsh treatment. So freedom of speech is a big one as well. Without these new systems where all of this could be checked, people could and in some cases have spoken secretly and privately about things. Whereas now with the internet, posting online on a blog, they will find you and it's not going to be pretty for you. Okay, So freedom of speech is also impaired um, by having these 
all these online systems that we have that check every single thing that, that you're, um, you're typing in. And next we have acceptable use. And again, it's in the name. It's what you're allowed to do on a computer system. So typically people at work are not allowed to visit social media sites. And if they find a way around it and visit it for X amount of hours within a day wasting time, they might actually get pulled into a manager's office and get not told off, but they might be put on disciplinary for wasting company time, wasting hours that they should be working. So health and safety is the next one. And this plays a big role for people that like myself that work on computers every single day. So here we have repetitive work. Um, so aches and pains can be caused by repetitive work, uncomfortable working postures, incorrect screen settings, carrying out tasks for long periods without suitable rest breaks. Repetitive work, right? Typing on a, a keyboard. There's something called RSI, repetitive um, strain injury, where your wrist could actually get damaged or, or even um, inflamed, let's say, by doing the same thing again and again and again, because those, only those muscles are being used. So that could be an issue. Uncomfortable working posture, not sitting upright, not having your back arched how it should be arched. That's not the greatest thing in the world. Um, and over time, it will start to affect your back. I remember years ago, I actually had back pain. Incorrect screen settings. Many people like their screens on the brightest settings so that they can see everything as clear as day. However, um, studies, some studies have shown that blue light and some studies have shown that blue light filters um, are actually beneficial some have said no, some have said yes. Uh, the jury is still out on that one. But it's never a good idea to have your screen on the highest brightness um, consistently for as long as possible. And especially if you're working at night, you should have light around you as well. Just having light from the screen coming out your eyes is not the best. Carrying out tasks for long periods without suitable rest breaks. Again, your neck, your arms, your shoulders, your legs, it's always a good idea to get up and move around. Every hour or so you get up, take a five minute break, walk around, rest your eyes. Um, a lot of people have really dry eyes like myself because we're always staring at a screen, not blinking very often. So these are just some of the health and safety issues that might um, arise when using computers. So many people having access to digital devices means that digital content is very easily shared. So the Copyright and Misuse Act is actually something that's heavily um, monitored by some companies anyway. So what that means is that if someone owns a piece of work, let's say the new Spider-Man movie comes out and I want to watch the movie, my friends found a way to download it and they send it to me, I send it to someone else, that person keeps sending it to other people. Um, we have broken the copyright law. The copyright license of that movie states that only the person who owns that movie or people who have permission to distribute that movie should be doing that. So copyright is a big thing in, in a world where everything can be shared so easily. I can now send an entire movie over WhatsApp Years and years ago, you had no other option but to go to the cinema and watch a movie. Then after that, we had DVDs. Now we have Blu-rays. Now we have people just streaming movies on Netflix completely free of even a TV. I can stream Netflix on my mobile phone now. The Data Protection Act, um, I think we've gone over some of this already, but people and companies, we have the responsibility to protect data of anyone that we hold. For example, I have made websites for people in the past and they've sent me personal details I have to store those details just so I don't become an annoyance. Oh, how do I log into this again? How do I log into that? So I typically have it written down somewhere, but I have it stored in a location that's either very, very hard to get to by anyone or impossible. So for example, if I did store some details on my Google Drive, I would have two-factor authentication set up just to my mobile phone number. So only I can get that text message and no one else would be able to log in. Like copyright, privacy is also now a massive issue. There is so much information about there on so many people. So this is why the Data Protection Act come, comes in as well, because companies, there are actually companies on the internet which actually buy your data from other companies. And in some countries around the world, this is completely and perfectly legal. You download an app, you give it all the details you want to give it, and that app, because of where it is based or because of the country you're based in, has permission to then sell those details to other people. And the details get passed around, passed around, passed around. And not every company is going to have the correct measures in place to ensure that people's data is kept safe and secure. So privacy is a big one as well. Um, quite simply put, some people give up their own privacy without even knowing. Social media is a massive thing. However, most social media apps, most apps on, on your phone, um, they get access to your GPS or your location services, your satnav, for example, your, your maps, your 
your WhatsApp, your Instagram, your Facebook. And in some cases, you might accidentally broadcast that information to other people. Many people even take pictures when they're on holiday and post it on public social media so everyone knows where you are, how long you're going to be there roughly. And it, it has happened before where people have actually gone in and robbed houses because they know the owner is in Dubai, for example, and they won't be back for a week because they've put this information on the internet. So some people inadvertently give up their own privacy without even realizing the negative benefits, well, the negatives that's going to come along with that. Computer misuse. I think this has, again, been covered by us, but it's simply using a computer to do something you should not do. You either hack into someone's system, you gain access, you destroy their data, you copy their data. It's simply misusing a computer. So doing something negative with a computer system by using another computer system, typically. Getting into, into a system and deleting someone's details, that could have massive impacts on a business, on an individual, on anyone, really. So the Computer Misuse Act is put in place to try and actually prevent this from happening. A lot of businesses actually lose money if people hack in, steal the data. People lose jobs. Um, theft of personal wealth. So cryptocurrency is a massive thing right now. And many crypto exchanges, let's say, or many people's crypto wallets or crypto details have been obtained by misusing a computer. So imagine one Bitcoin is roughly forty to $50,000 right now. Someone invests all their savings into cryptocurrency, into Bitcoin, for example. They have, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand in there. Someone else uses a computer to get access to their details, uses a computer to hack the exchange, and they steal all that data. This is going to have a massive knock-on effect on everyone else. So lastly, we have accessibility. Now, quite simply, it needs to be accessible by everyone or almost everyone. So even if you're trying to sell stuff on a website, your website, it would be a good idea to have your website designed in such a way that people who are visually impaired can use it. It would make sense for if you're uploading a video to YouTube, maybe add subtitles. So these are things, again, it doesn't seem like it should come under moral ethics. However, it's, it's just generally a good thing to do to make everyone able to use some form of technology the way they want. Not many people, for example, the example I, the example I always give is Stephen Hawking wasn't um, able to move very much. He had some motor disease um, where movement was not possible for him in his later years. As a result of that, he managed to use technology. I think, think he had a, 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 a voice thing attached to his throat where he could actually speak using that. And he could actually type using simply his eyes and twitches which means that all of those amazing physics papers that were written weren't written by him sitting at a desk typing or telling someone else what to write. He wrote some of them by actually looking at a screen. There was an eye tracking device attached to it and he was able to move his eyes over the letters that he wanted to and select the letters by doing whatever action was predefined. And that's how he managed to type. Um, moral and ethics. I, th I think for this section, the main thing that people need to focus on are these keywords and the keywords are again environment unequal access globalization online behavior freedom of speech acceptable use health and safety copyright protection of data so the data protection act privacy computer misuse and accessibility if you can focus on these words and know what they mean and generally un um, understand how they operate in a IT sense, then you should be fine for this section because the questions are typically around explain two um, moral or ethical issues a business needs to consider when gathering this information, when gathering any form of information. They obviously need to think about uh, the Computer Misuse Act, they need to think about privacy, they need to think about Data Protection Act because the person's data is everything. The company companies make money off data, so they need to keep that data safe and secure. Only people that need to have access to that data should have access. Not everyone, even though the janitor or the lunch lady in a school works in a school, do they really need to have access to the students' names, addresses, phone numbers, emails? Maybe not. Only the teachers and the senior members above the teachers should really have access to that. And even so, if you don't teach a student, you shouldn't really be accessing their files willy-nilly, right? It, it, it should be, there should be some form of process in place. So simply know what these words mean, know how to break them down, know how to, uh, let's say, I, I'm going to use this, Lucy, attach them to the scenario and explain what needs to be explained.